I'm Ann. This is Ann Makes. Welcome into the studio on this snowy Thursday morning. Yes, we are having a snowy day. It's been snowing for several hours, maybe six or seven hours now. It's not that bad. It's I'm in the Ottawa region and uh, the snow is melting fairly quickly off the road, so it's not a big deal. Uh, but it is beautiful for us who live out in the country because everything is covered with snow. So I just want to sh give you a look-see of that there. Okay, sorry. So uh, it's harder to see behind me because it creates like a, a very white, bright light background, but that, that's what happens with the sun. There's not much sun out there, but the, the whiteness of the snow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, makes it makes everything look brighter. So today I'm doing something different. I'm showing you where I am on my diamond painting by Victoria's Moon. It is the cat with colorful yarn ball. Remember a few months ago I did a video showing you I had received this product uh, for review and I had shown you my initial setup, how I was going to work on it. And if you remember, I also explained that this is one of, this is the largest diamond painting project I had ever worked on. And I was not that experienced with diamond painting. As you can see right behind me, this here, this is actually my very, very first diamond painting project that I actually turned into a three-dimensional mannequin pincushion. I made a whole body for it and I did this. Uh, this was given to me by, this is a diamond dots pattern given to me by Leisure Arts. Thank you. And uh, we had a contest of designers uh, were given Designers who are influencers were given uh, some diamond dot projects and we had been entered into a competition to make something with the diamond dots and of course I truly enjoyed uh, diamond painting and I really got hooked. So I have done some other diamond dot paintings. I really like working with them and uh, today I'm just showing you the Victoria's Moon one, the cat and colorful yarn ball. And in the previous video I had shown you my setup. So today I just wanted to show you an update on my setup. I've modified things as the more I work on diamond paintings the more I'm becoming familiar with what works for me, what I'm comfortable with, and what I find most efficient. And I just thought I would show you where I am with this project. I'm sitting here at my drafting desk. Uh, on the top, my drafting desk is a, a wooden, a brown wooden one. I have a foam core board right over the top of my entire project. This is here just as a precaution. As you know, I have a beautiful kitty who is full of energy and mischievous and, and it, you know, likes to be a part of everything that I do. So this was just a way to protect my work in whenever I have to walk away from it, <laughs> from kitty and also from the dust. So I'm gonna remove my foam core board here. We have my desk underneath here. I have some parchment paper here over the project. At first, I showed you in the, pre the first video how I had chosen to cut the large cover that covers the entire canvas into sections. And I did start working like that. I did start working by sections. And let me show you what I've gotten done so far. I just used this big clip here to hold the two pieces of parchment paper that I have. So, so far I have completed the one third of the, one third of the canvas fully. You can see, if you can see that. You can see part of Kitty here. Maybe if I turn this light on. So 
So you can see the cute little tabby cat here and all the colorful yarns. Uh, there's a lot of different colors in this project. I have a total of 35, I believe. Yes, there's 35 different colors in this one project. And there's a lot of what I call confetti work. Lots of lots of different colors in small areas. And uh, yeah, these, I did this section by section. It is a square drill, by the way. You know, my first square drill project. Full, my first full project as well. And I'm enjoying it tremendously. I do love the design. I love all the different colors. And I did start doing it section by section. I would do uh, one color at a time per section. And uh, yeah, I did that. And then I wanted to try something else. Uh, I was getting a little bit tired of taking the little trays all the time that I have. Taking the little tray and, you know, putting the little beads. And I would do that. I could do that about 12, maybe 12 to 15, maybe 20 times for one small section because of all the different colors. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is taking a very long time. So uh, I thought I'm gonna try doing one color at a time. And so far for me, doing the one color at a time, uh, I, I'm enjoying that the most. So let me show you what I have done. Last night, I finished applying all the three tens of the blacks. So I think this is the most popular color on all of the diamond paintings, one of the most popular colors. This was the largest quantity I had. And I finally finished putting the last, at least I hope it was the last one, <laughs> last night. So I'll show you what that looks like now. So what I'm doing, instead of working with the original paper, I would have, be, I'm not working with the original protective cover paper anymore because I had cut it up into squares and peeling back each section to do just one color uh, proved to be a little challenging because it was hard to stick sometimes to stick all the little pieces back I'm going to show you that oh to stick back all the little pieces covering you know and and then I was flipping them back and and it's just and the corners were starting to curl up so I thought no that's not working for me uh, so now I've decided I'm gonna try this parchment paper way and I is I find that the parchment paper and this is the parchment paper I bought at Dollar Tree tends to stick really really like sticks really sticks to the diamond painting uh, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna like that either I'm giving it a try with the parchment paper now to see if I like that uh, better so here is kitty I'm trying to show you here here we go so kitty is taking shape and you get an idea for all the yarn that there is. So that is one thing I've done is that I've chosen to go with the parchment paper because I have cut up the protective cover um, and I don't like working with small pieces of protection, a protective cover anymore. So in hindsight, I would have just left it as one piece maybe, or maybe just two big pieces, just because it's a large canvas and it's a little uh, unruly to work with a large canvas. So the other thing I've learned in my time uh, working on this beautiful project, and I'm just gonna cover it back up so that nothing happens.
So what I, I do when I'm not working on the canvas is that I cover it with these two pieces of parchment paper. I've put little pieces of washi tape on the top of the parchment. I don't know if I really need to do that, but I just thought maybe I should keep the, the, st the side I stick to the canvas always the same. And I use this big clip here, big like I think it's a chip bag clip, to just hold everything together. And I just move the canvas up and around whenever I need to work on another area. And if I need to cover a, an area that is sticky and that I'm not working on, I have a third, I have another smaller piece of parchment paper that I put down that I could cover, protect the, the sticky part of the canvas while I'm working from, from my arm or if I'm wearing a sweater, uh, I don't want to get any fluff on the sticky canvas. So I'm doing that. Now on my drafting table, what, what I've learned uh, painfully is that I work more comfortably with my project in the center of the draft table and I like using a light pad. This is a light pad that I have for drawing and I'm using it for this. It's a very heavy duty type of light pad. It only has one setting, but uh, that's fine with me. What I've done is to keep the light pad from sliding down off my drafting table, I've put this piece of shelf liner here. I have this can you see piece of shelf liner on my desk I don't want to stick anything to my drafting table because I use this drafting table also for drawing so uh, I don't want to stick anything on top of it so if I need to just draw on it with paper uh, there won't be any like lumps and bumps so I do that I put this piece of shelf liner um, I also have here I cut up a piece of placemat that's the same type of material and I use that just to hold the, the tray in place um, on, the, on the table but on top of the canvas. So this is what I found uh, works better for me is to have the light box on a non-slip surface. Oh, can you see? I'm trying, I'm working backwards from the camera. Uh, a non-slip surface here, the pink grippy thing, pink grippy thing, <laughs> the light pad on top, kind of centered on the drafting table, and then I place the canvas, because this is a, because this is a quite a large canvas, over the light table, or light box I should say, or what's it called? It's called a light pad, over the light pad. And then I just position it to the section I am working on. I pull back the parchment. And the next color I will be working on is, no, not 310, I finished those. I will be working on uh, number 26, uh, the 327s, which is like a dark brown. So I will be working on that symbol, and there's a lot of those. It's, it's like, wait. There's a lot of that symbol in the area. All along here, there's a lot of that, and here and here. So what I do is I cover the portion that I will not be working on with this piece of parchment so I can work um, more comfortably and just dot my little diamonds here and just, you know, use my tool and apply the little diamonds in the area that I am I want to work on. The parch piece of parchment paper here protects the rest of the canvas and I can just work on it like that. Now I've made these adjustments and how I work because I learned the hard way that work having 
the work closer to me and bending my neck all the time. So I've modified how I work on uh, this large diamond art painting by Victoria's Moon because I was hurting. <laughs> I had been working with the project closer to me, closer at the bottom of the drafting table, and I was always having my neck bent and my arms stretched. Uh, and it, I didn't realize that I was straining my neck and shoulders, and so I spent several days in pain <laughs> and having trouble sleeping because of that. Who would have thought that crafting could be dangerous? <laughs> So it's just, it's important. It's really important. And I, I read up on this. Uh, it's very important that when you are crafting, that you stretch and that you set yourself up ergonomically or in a comfortable way that you don't cause yourself any repetitive strains or any injuries because it's not fun. So this is my tip for you is that uh, really Focus on finding a very comfortable position to work in, no matter what your craft is. Uh, here, the diamond art, I find I, I need to see things up close. I need my glasses. I need light to come through the bottom of the canvas. I need to have overhead light. And it, I think that's really important how I set up my, my area to work comfortably. So those are my tips for you and uh, my update on where I am on this diamond canvas. So far, one third of it is complete. And the other two thirds, uh, I'm getting there. I've completed one entire color, <laughs> three tens. And now I'm working on another color. And I find out working on one color at a time, I am working fast. And I am enjoying uh, the progress I make every day. I love to see entire like big areas done or or that I empty or almost empty a bag of beads by the end of the day it's like it's a very satisfying feeling um, the other thing I wanted to show you is the rest of my setup and I'm gonna have to move the camera again to show you that so here is the side of my desk I have these holders uh, they these are from cre old Creative Memories uh, holders that we could bring to crops and attach to tables. And this one actually has an attachment to add a little plastic bag to it for our garbage. And I repurpose them here on my drafting table. They're just super handy. I have one here to hold, usually a beverage. Here I have a glass of water. And in this one, it has a little compartment here that at one time would fit the cell phone that I had. My current cell phone uh, does not fit in there, but that's that's okay. I find it very handy to put the tools that I use for my diamond painting. And on this section here, I keep a little jar of wax. What I did is I put the little pink, a lot of the little pink waxes I have from different kits into one little travel makeup container to keep it here I just find it it's a safe way to keep it cat fur free and in here I have some very important tools which are the remotes for the television and the satellite I have a phone it's the house phone and when I'm not filming with my uh, iPhone which I'm doing right now I will sit the iPhone and here, this is where my, this is the iPhone case, protective case. I just sit it here in my basket where I keep my little bags of beads. Again, this system is working great for me. I like having this. This is a clear bin that I have Velcroed uh, to the edge here. And the whole Velcro just stayed behind, of course. And, and I have a little one and a big one that I've just clipped together because I had too many bags to fit in one of these. And my little bags are essentially numbered from this, I follow the key that is on the diamond painting. And I have the number taped on there. 
with the little symbol. I got this from making a photocopy of the key. When I say the key, when I say the key, I mean this this key here that you get on this that's on the side of the diamond painting that tells you what each symbol represents, which color each symbol represents. So that's how um, I've labeled each little baggie for each color. I like to stack them up in my little bin here. And when I work on one color at a time, what I like to do is I like to fill up at least two trays, especially when I was working with the three tens. Um, fill up one or two trays depending on the how many of that color there there are and I just keep working on my painting uh, until my tray is empty <laughs> and when my tray is empty I take a little break I stretch my neck I stretch my arm shoulders I get up for a few minutes uh, and then I sit back down and keep going and I find that that is more comfortable for me and I am actually diamond painting faster. So uh, I hope you found these tips uh, from my experience maybe useful, maybe helpful to you, or at least entertaining. And I'm very proud to show you the progress I've made on my, my beautiful cat with colorful uh, yarn ball diamond art painting, a full drill, and a square full drill, full, square drills, a full canvas from Victoria's Moon. If you enjoyed this video, or if you liked it, or if at least it gave you a chuckle, uh, please give this a thumbs up. Please like, comment, share. If you have any questions, please post them down below. If you have any tips of your own for diamond painting, please post them in the comments because uh, this is helpful to all of us who have become addicted to this diamond painting. So thank you so very much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, stay crafty. Bye.